Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. AT&T, in all of this competitiveness in the industry, has been relatively the most quiet carrier out of all of them. At least on the MNO side. When we're talking Verizon and we're talking T-Mobile, I still feel AT&T has created their own lane and they've been the most quiet. They remove perks on their on their unlimited plans. In fact, you can make the argument that HBO Max may have been more value or what not. But if you compare the, them against T-Mobile's perks and Verizon's perks, even with HBO Max, AT&T had the lowest amount of perks. T-Mobile has Netflix. They have other stuff. They got the in-flight Wi-Fi. They got a ton, right? Verizon has the Disney Plus bundle, Apple Music, and the list goes on. AT&T really didn't engage too heavy in the perks. They just offered HBO Max, and then every now and then they threw in like a six-month uh, Google Stadia subscription, and that was pretty much it. So they kind of shied away from that and stayed away from it. They didn't really engage. And then, as you guys saw, when they released that new AT&T Premium plan, they got rid of the perk. They no longer offer anything. And in the second quarter, they still had the most amount of postpaid growth. So here in this video, or in this article, I should say, why we're expanding one of the country's largest fiber networks and why it matters to you. So the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I think this plays into at and strategy. at and has very smart people at the top that run the company. And it, it kind of trickles down. It's a domino effect. They got great people, executives at the top, and they got great mid, mid to, to low level management. And they're all, they all now seem to be in tune and what they're doing is working for them. Now, is it sustainable long term? That remains to be seen, right? They are now known to have the best promotional offers and price in the industry. They are the ones that started the new and existing customers get the same deal. And they've been They've been offering it more uh, aggressively and more consistently. They are the ones that are consistently and aggressively offering now the new any condition Samsung deal. And they're doing that effectively. It, it's working. The numbers are in AT&T's favor and have been for the last several quarters without really making a lot of noise and adding a ton of perks. So now AT&T is still considered to be the quiet carrier, right? I still get those comments. I still get the commentary in other chats. And I see it on other tech blogs. Hey, where's AT&T? What are they doing? Um, when are they coming out? What, so that's, that's some of the talk that I'm hearing around the, uh, the community. So I'm very in tune with AT&T, right? So I know things that are that are coming in the future that I can't even talk about because they're so high level, right? So the one thing that I that I can let you uh, guys know, if you you know, and and I guess you can say, oh, it's a, it's a negative, and it is a negative. But I let you guys know. I kind of hinted it on the on the Twitter, but starting August twenty sixth this month, AT and T is increasing activation fees and upgrade fees by five dollars. So you're gonna pay five dollars more. If you want to upgrade your device or if you want to activate a new device. So that's increasing. That's coming first. The, uh, the September announcement that I've been teasing on my Twitter, that's a big one. That, that's a big one that I, I can't talk about. I'll wait for the announcement to come out and then, and then we, can, we can talk about it in a video. But other than that, Right, I speak to the contacts daily. We go back and forth, and there's several contacts. There's really nothing else coming 
besides what I know from AT&T. They're going to continue their same trajectory. They're going to continue the same way they've been operating, right? Phone deals and marketing. That's that's it. Now, whether you like the marketing or not, that's up to you. Uh, I, I think it's effective. It shows in the numbers. I, I don't think it's the best, but I think it's effective enough to where people are like, Okay, this is great. Let me go to AT&T. And then when they go to AT&T, right? And AT&T did like 823,000 post-pay net ads for the quarter. They are in that if they get that phone with that promotion, they're locked in for 36 months. So yeah, it may be bad if in fact those customers do leave after after the 36 months, but in the meantime, for those 36 months, I mean AT&T is making money off of that customer. So, and I do think that the fiber plays into the sale and the growth of the company, right? It's a kind of, it's kind of an either or. So, for example, my market, El Paso, at and the ILEC, and they're scaling fiber at an aggressive pace. So eventually by 2025, they want to have 30 million households with their fiber. And that is ultimately, at the end of the day, the better product, right? Fixed wireless access whatever right that's it fixed wireless access is not going to compete with the amount of throughput and consistency you get from fiber we're talking pings jitter and just raw throughput fiber is the better choice any day of the week so as AT&T moves in smartly they attack you both ways right you go into the neighborhood hey hey AT&T fibers here so they send a rep. Okay, we want to sign up fiber. Boom, here's our wireless, right? Because now if, as soon as they get into the living room with the fiber, they send a technician and behind the technician is a sales rep. Hey, we see, we see that you signed up for our fiber. Here's our, our wireless. Oh, I wasn't really thinking about the wireless. Bam, 25% discount if you added. Oh, tell me more. See, see where I'm going with this? It's, it's really that simple now for AT&T to make that sale. So fiber is also leading, and, and, and it's not all fiber customers, it's of course a percentage, but that's also leading to growth on the wireless side for AT&T. And I think the promos in, in, in that type of sale is an added bonus, right? It's like, okay, we offer 25% off if you bundle your, your fiber with wireless. Then the customer is like, okay, tell me more. Okay, here we have the 11, um, the iPhone 11 or iPhone 12 or 13 for this amount of money off. Oh wow, you know now now you're 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 just bringing them in even more. Or if we have you know we have the Samsung S22 uh, for free if you bring your phone any condition, you know whatever. You you guys see where I'm going with this? It's very very successful what what AT&T is doing now they're they're relatively quiet right we don't see them in in the media being flashy every day we don't really see them like you know being super super interactive on social media yeah they do tweet out a few things here and there but it's really nothing to to uh really report about right they're just continuing network build fiber First net densification, small cells, C band. That's kind of their their lane. They've created it, and they're sticking to it, and it's working. Now, could there be a potential in the future where they do drop off again, and they they might have to you know become more competitive? It's possible. I mean, we saw AT and T last decade. I mean, they were horrendous. They all of a sudden got new. Um, they all of a sudden got new management or the, the management that they had at the time, they just went robust. They, uh, we want media, we want to buy it, we want to own it. And that was a huge negative at that time. Right? And now we see it. Now you can, you can sit there and say T-Mobile may have caused them to get rid of media. Or, you know, you could say AT&T wanted to more aggressively build out C-band and fiber, and that got them to get rid of the media side. 
Either way you look at it, it made AT&T more competitive and it shows in the numbers. So let me know what you guys think about this. I will leave this article in the description down below so you guys could check it out. Um, just one more thing, the, the whole thing about you know, AT&T pushing 10 gigs, 5 gigs, maybe 20 in the future. I think that's, that's just overkill for, for right now. And I think that's just AT&T pretty much signaling like, hey, we have this. You know, this is where the, where the big dogs in the fiber side, you know what I mean? Kind of that, that type of take. But oftentimes, heck, 99.9% .9 of the times now, if they do push and get 10 gigs or get you to get it, you're probably not going to have a device in the house that's going to be able to that's even capable of doing 10 gigs for, you know, just just as an example. So, again, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe to the channel. Follow my social media outlets for more updates and stay tuned to the channel. This is Tyrone with Tech Life and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.